Hello, hello everybody. I am Zachariah, the ghostwriter. Let me recap episode 4 of Red Ink. This is well written. There is so many twists. You must pay attention to every detail. This is Lucy Kambule after she was invited by Gariso to Gariso's place. Gariso was that guy. He was cooking for her. She loved him. We know that she really loved the guy who can cook. She said, Gary, he's a good cook. Although he doesn't want to cook all the time, he just wants her to cook. But since now the marriage is falling apart, she is falling in love with KG. And KG knows it. He knows that she's a gone girl. All he has to do is to play his cards right. He was there to console her after her best friend Pat was killed. He is playing his cards right. Now we saw after she left here because she saw that, you know, she was, you know, obviously showing that she loves kg she went home unfortunately she didn't lock her door because she was still fixed on her phone reading messages from kg that's when the intruder showed up and the gentleman started pulling her and she was screaming because of she didn't know who was that person and what the person wanted but it turned out that that person wanted the laptop and Lucy gave herself a chance to survive by fighting back and she ran to another room where she can go and hide. And I love how Brian is super, super vigilant because Brian showed up to save Lucy, but he arrived a couple of minutes later only to find out that the thief, you know, left the premise already. But after that, you know, that's when he said, look, I just wanted to come and check if you are fine. Let me just go and check, you know, the CCTV. And let me also call the security. We will deal with the police tomorrow morning. Just make sure that you rest. But, you know, Lucy said, I don't think I can even sleep because of what just happened. And the following morning, that's when she went to Pat's funeral. And that funeral, you know, was that kind of a funeral that gave Lucy closure. Because remember, Pat's mother accused Lucy for killing Pat. Remember, Pat and Lucy, they were having an argument because Pat promised to give Lucy 40% of their company so that they can both run that company. But when Lucy was asking for those percentages, there was a quarrel between the two. And we all know that Tepo, who is Pat's boyfriend, was the one who didn't want Pat to give Lucy those shares. And after the police were busy with investigations of obviously Lucy was the first suspect and the mother thought Lucy had something to tell about the passing of their daughter because of she was found with their daughter in the office and she was the one who was fighting with their daughter because of they were fighting for shares. That means they are fighting for the company. But on this episode, we saw Pat's mother apologizing to Lucy and she said something very important. She said to Lucy, Look, you and I, we both know that Tsepo is the one who killed Pat. But Pat loved you so much. And Pat always said, if there will be war, and she's told that she should choose one person to go to war with her, she said she will always choose you. Because she will never lose with you by her side. That means she trusts Lucy more than even her mom. She trusts Lucy more than her sister. She trusts Lucy more than her family. And that gave Lucy power. And she said, Nzoaki will give you the rest of the details. And that's when we heard that the family decided that Lucy must take over the company and Lucy must get the shares that she was asking for. And they decided to give her more. They decided to give her 75% of the company. And they said the remaining 25%, which was supposed to be Pat's shares, will automatically go to Pat's parent so that they can have something to eat. Now, they trust Lucy so much in a way that they even allow her to run the company. Look at what God, how God do his things. She was accused of killing her best friend. She was treated so bad by Gary, the husband. She is renting a quarters whereby it's not actually where she wanted to be, but because of the situation, she is forced to stay there. But look at her now. She's the company owner. And she's also loved by her landlord, Brian. 
she finally found a place whereby she is protected a place whereby you know the white guy just see her as a part of his family he is making sure that he's telling her that you know this is the cafe and as long as she follow his rules she is safe under you know his roof this is a beautiful story whereby it shows that a person who doesn't even know you that person might do everything in their power to make sure that they protect you the person who is not even your family can go to war for you and can keep you safe and can give you that peace of mind brian is a good landlord he is doing everything in his power to make sure that lucy she is safe and lucy she is happy he is protecting lucy and we have seen when Garzo was trying to call Lucy and Lucy was not picking up the phone when he decided to give KG access. And Lucy was shocked when she see KG at her door and she asked KG, how did you get access? And KG said, you know, Brian gave me the access. And she said, that means Brian like you, you know, because he's not the type of a person who can easily give the person access. And Brian did that because of on the night of you know, Pat's death, we have seen KG supporting Lucy. KG drove Lucy home because of Lucy couldn't drive. She was dealing with a lot. And Brian was at the window watching what was, what, what was going on when he was looking at the curfew. And he knows that KG spent a night with Lucy. That means Lucy feel comfortable with KG. That means Lucy won't fight if he open the gate for KG. And KG didn't come empty-handed. He came there with Chinese food. And he also remembered what Lucy eats. And Lucy was shocked to see that he has the food that, you know, she likes. Unfortunately, instead of buying pork, he bought beef. But she said, no problem, we will eat. And when they were busy eating, that's when they were reminiscing about those days when they were still working for Daily Mail. They were drinking their wine and they eventually... Uh, when deep into Napoleon's fires. And they also picked up that, you know, Napoleon and Fiso were living at this orphan age and they also had the address. And obviously Lucy is going to follow that story. And that's when we also realized that KG was also working on that story back in the days. And KG said he almost quit his job at Daily Mail. But when Lucy arrived, that's when he found a reason to go to work and he loves Lucy so much. And that's when they started kissing. You can tell that they've always been that thing between the two. And these guys are dating and I just love it for them simply because of they are actually a perfect couple. Because she deserved the best. Before that, we have seen Lucy being called to school alongside Gary simply because of now their son is struggling at school kaya he is talking about dead people and he's talking about you know are the things that he see from lucy's files and obviously other kids you know they're traumatized by that you know once there is a child who always talk about murder who talk about dead bodies who talk about scars that you know he see all the time obviously he is disturbing other you know kids and the principal called the parents to school so that they can address that with them and we have seen gary you know also confessing that he is seeing someone and that person who is you know who he's dating is copano and lucy was shocked to know that copano and gary are a thing on the other side we have seen that fundi and kk's thing is getting serious whereby kk is inviting Fundi to a nicer club whereby they can chill together and he also said to Fundi please invite your friends especially Lucy Kambule and she spoke with Lucy Kambule Lucy Kambule was shocked and she wanted to know how did Fundi end up you know meeting a guy like KK and when she confessed that I met the guy via only fans simply because of the guy like my feet and it was just a bit of a comedy because they were all laughing like this is how you guys met you know but she didn't know that you know this guy kk he is working for the big boys and he is there on mission he is not 
you know, with her because of he likes her. He is there because of the want to get to Lucy. And we have seen when Lucy agreed to visit the place where the venue where they have to go and meet. You know, I just got distracted a bit because of I remember that before she went to that venue, that's when she made love with Cariso. Like Cariso got the thing. Cariso got the dance, you know, as I call it. And it was it was something that he has been waiting for for all those years. And once he got the opportunity to be with Lucy, he made sure that he used that opportunity well. But shockingly, she couldn't stay after they did the dance because she said, I have to go. KG was surprised, like, we just did what we did and already you're telling me that you have to go. You know, obviously he's a good guy, he let her go. And when she arrived to the club, that's when she met this gentleman by the name of KK. And KK is just a great, great guy, talking to them nicely. And he said, you know, he has to go outside because of Peter Maquarela. He is outside. Remember, Peter Maquarela, he is the director who is well known in SA. And now, since Fundi wants to be, you know, an actress, he is going to speak with Peter Maquarela so that Peter can give Fundi, you know, a, a role whereby she can play, you know, a bride. And she knows that this is her break. She is going to be on TV finally after, you know, dealing with auditions, after struggling, wanting to be on TV. This guy is the guy who is going to plug her, not knowing that Peter Maquarela works with Napoleon. And we have seen the biggest twist of them all when he said, when KK said, Peter Maquarela is outside, let me go and speak with Peter Maquarela. And obviously he took Fundi with him so that he can introduce Fundi to Peter Maquarela as he promised on the previous episode. She went to, you know, the ladies' restroom only to find out that she has been followed by the guy who looks exactly like Napoleon Dingizwayo the butcher now when you look at that guy oh you start thinking if maybe sfiso and napoleon are twins and if that person who looks like napoleon is not actually napoleon is sfiso the brother who they've been looking for because remember napoleon he is in solitary confinement after killing a prison warder. I will share a picture with you so that you will see him in a prison cell. That's why I'm saying this is a masterpiece. This is well written. Now, on this episode, we have seen when Fundi was telling Lucy about KK. That's when Lucy received a phone call from Napoleon Tingiswayo after a very long time. Remember, when you are in solitary confinement, you are not allowed to have visitors. And you cannot do things that people do because you are isolated. And he did that because he had no choice. He did that because of on that night where he killed the prison warder, they were going to kill him. There was an order to kill him that night. So he knew that his only way was to kill a prison warder. Because he killed, you know, um, a prisoner before and they didn't even take him to solitary confinement. He knew that he needs something big so that it, it can help him. The guy is a thinker. The guy will do everything he can so that he can survive. And we have seen that when he is in solitary confinement, he started, you know, building a relationship with this prison warder by the name of Davi or Davy, and Davy gave him a phone. He used that phone to call Lucy Kambule so that he can speak with Lucy Kambule. Remember, before that, he was you know borrowing phone from Goliath, but now he can no longer get you know the phone from his friend Goliath because of he is in solitary confinement. He is far from Goliath, and that's when he set up a meeting between him and Lucy, and he spoke with Lucy, and Lucy showed up. And when they were sitting down and talking, that's when Napoleon told Lucy everything about his first kill. And he said he killed this lady by the name of Pinky. 
Pinky was, you know, this lady who wear the mini skates and stuff like that. And he didn't like that. And he said it was winter when he did his first kill. And he said he didn't even look into her eyes. And that's why he felt like he had to do it again and he had to do it the right way. And But he realized that there is no perfect way of doing what he has been doing. That's how he started becoming a serial killer. And he also revealed that when he was doing it, he felt so much power and he wanted to get that feeling over and over again. And that time, you know, Lucy was taking notes so that listening to everything, obviously taking notes in her head so that she will go home and start writing. This TV show is well done. But here is the thing. He said all his killings, he never spilled blood. But when we check the reports and when we check all the bodies of his victims, there was blood everywhere. It looks like there is someone who goes there and finish what Napoleon started. Once Napoleon do what he does, there is someone who goes out there and making, you know, the, that scene to become the way he wants it to become. So you ask yourself if these politicians or these people who he calls sponsors, are they the one who goes after that or do they have the identical guy who look exactly like napoleon do they have a clone do they have the copy of napoleon you know thing is why that's the reason why i'm saying this tv show guys it's a well-written tv show and i love it it's beautiful because we don't know now what will happen on episode five because now lucy is alone with this guy who look exactly like the butcher and she's, she's, she's afraid of him. And if that's not Sfiso, if that's the butcher, that means the butcher has so much power and it will go back to the story that we kept on hearing about, you know, South African, you know, prisoners who are released when they have to go and do some dirty jobs for, for politicians, you know. And, and if they are going that route whereby they will show us, you know, some of the things. Because remember, in SA, we, we have some so many unsolved murder cases and when they're checking they cannot find the suspect and people are suspecting that people who are committing these murders are people who are convicted already there are people who are in jail during time already there are people who are saving life sentences already for them to support their families outside they have to go and do those dirty jobs for certain people who are in power now, they are the ones who are released to go and do whatever that they do. I am saying this because of, you know, this type of stories are there. When you watch a lot of podcasts, you'll hear people who are doing time, you know, telling us how things do happen. Because the jail system, it's another system out there whereby people are doing certain things so that they can survive. And who will be the better person to go and deal with that type of a thing rather than the person who's already convicted for doing that thing, who is an act, expert on that thing. Obviously, they're like saying for us to go and call somebody who is not even having any experience in that field, we'd rather go to prison and get people who have done it already repeatedly and we know they're capable of doing it. And even if that person, you know, do what they do, they cannot be arrested because they are arrested already. They are already arrested. And even if you can find the, their fingerprints on the scene, you cannot win that case because the person during that time is, is reportedly to be in the cell. So you can't win that case. You know, you can't win that case no matter how hard you want to investigate. You can't win that case. And I appreciate you guys showing me love and support because this is something new. This is one of the top TV shows according to my opinion.